Hi everybody, it's Chanoa with The Crafty Mess. I'm also admin for Black Rose Crafting Network and owner of Brique and More Ethnic Gifts. Today I'm here with another tutorial and this one is brought to you by request from my Black Rose Crafting Network group on Facebook. I've gotten numerous requests from the ladies in the group wanting to know how they can make t-shirts using heat transfer vinyl and heat transfer vinyl paper. We're going to go over both of those methods in details and we're actually going to complete a shirt using both methods from front to back, uh, start to finish, from the graphic design all the way to the completion. So one of the shirts we're going to go ahead and complete using our heat press, the other we're going to use a at-home iron. So I just want to show you that it can be versatile, anyone can do this, you don't need any special equipment, stay tuned if you'd like to know how. Okay guys, before we get into the actual how-tos of the video, I did want to take time to say thank you to all of the people who have subscribed to my channel. I'm very humbled, gracious, appreciative of everyone, and I'm on my way to monetization. Thank you so far for all of your help, and I appreciate all of your support going forward. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting on? Hit that bell for notifications when I'm doing my next videos and also the like button. All your support helps me so much and that just ensures that I can do more videos like these. Okay, so the first method we're going to do is using heat transfer paper. I have heat transfer paper for light fabrics as well as heat transfer paper for dark fabrics. The light fabric transfer paper is Jolie Boutique and that can be found at any craft store and also at Walmart. The transfer paper that I'm using for dark fabric is Nina 3G Jet Opaque and that you have to purchase online. Here are two onesies I made using the Jolie Boutique for light colored fabrics. When you're using the transfer paper for light colored fabrics, remember you must mirror your image because you're going to put the image face down onto your t-shirt and iron on top. Once it's cooled, you pull the backing off and then this is what you're left with. There is a background that is on the shirt, however, it is clear, so you cannot see it. Here's a tank top that I made using the 3G Opaque for dark fabrics. And because it is a white shirt, it left a white background behind it. So I really should have used the transfer paper for light fabrics for this one. It doesn't look bad because the shirt itself is white. However, you could see if this were on a gray shirt, you'd have that white background that would really stick out like a sore thumb. I know this isn't a shirt. However, this is a denim jacket that I had began working on um, and adding some designs to. All of these designs were made using the Nina 3G Opaque for dark fabrics. So this is with a white background, but because of the color saturation, it really pops on these dark colors. We're going to be using 100% cotton shirts for today's projects. However, when you're using heat transfer paper and heat transfer vinyl, you can pretty much do that on any type of uh, fabric. The thing that you want to make sure of is that whatever fabric you're using, it isn't going to melt, meaning that it can take the high heat. Okay, so the next method of shirt making we're going to be using is with heat transfer vinyl, and this one will require that you have either a Cricut silhouette or some other type of plotting machine to cut out your vinyl. And here are a few types of vinyl that um, I like to use. This by no means is all of it. I'll show you guys a quick glimpse of my vinyl collection in just a moment. This is a foil vinyl. This is just a regular glossy vinyl. Here we have a holographic shimmery sparkle vinyl. And this is a 
glitter vinyl. You can use these with each other or by themselves. It really depends on you and what your design calls for. It does not require that you have a heat press or an easy press machine. However, it's preferred. I'm going to show you a t-shirt that I made using heat transfer vinyl and I used two types of vinyl to complete this design. For the word wine and the lower portion of the word life I used just a regular black vinyl. For the upper portion of the word life I layered using a gray, uh, grape colored foil vinyl. All right, let's go ahead and get into the design. So from my Cricut Design Space home page, I went ahead and hit the plus sign to get a new blank canvas. And then I hit upload and I uploaded this particular design into my Cricut Design Space, went ahead and highlighted the design after it was brought into Cricut and then hit insert image to put it onto my canvas. So that's where we are now. Now this is already set up as a print and cut image and I can see that here on the right where it says print and cut and I can also see that here at the top where it lets me know it's a print and cut. So I went ahead and sized it to the maximum size Cricut will allow for a print and cut, which is 9.25 by 6.75. Now that I have my dimensions set, I can go ahead and print this out on my Jolie's Boutique light colored transfer paper. Remember though, we're going to hit this make it button, send it over to our mat, and before we print it out, hit the mirror button. Whenever you're using the light transfer sheets, you have to always remember to mirror your image because you're going to apply it face down. All right, so I have it the size that I want. Everything's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and hit that send to printer button. Okay, and I am going to hit the system dialog box because I want to go to my printer's dialog box and change it so that it's going to print on the best setting. Okay, once it's printed out, then I'll meet you back at the mat. Okay, so I have my design printed out on my Jolie Boutique light fabric transfer sheet and remember to mirror your image and I also want to edit to say to please remember to remove your bleed okay now I cut this out by hand because if I were to have loaded this into my Cricut machine it was going to want to cut out each of the letters individually and I don't want that. I just want the whole design this way. So I just went ahead and using my scissors cut it uh, out by hand. So now what you're going to do is I have my light colored shirt here. You're going to take your transfer paper and you are going to put it face down on your shirt. So notice that now when it's face down you can see the words are going to show up the right way and then you're going to apply your heat on top of this now what I normally would do and um, even before I hit, have my heat pressed I would take one of these uh, Teflon sheets or you can take some butch butcher paper and put it over your design and then apply your heat okay now before we do that, I'm going to show you how I get the placement just right on the t-shirt. So what you want to do is you want to take your tee and you want to make sure you line up the seams perfectly on this or as perfect as you can. The sleeves and, and all of that. And once you have everything lined up, 
okay what happens is you end up getting like a crease line and you can either take your iron and actually iron it so it shows up you know a lot better or I find that if you just you know do it with your hand it uh, it gives you a line a faint one but a line um, that now is going down the middle so now to make sure that I put this correct what I do is I take my design and putting these two ends together I just really lightly bend the top there and bend just the bottom there and then that gives me a line here and here so that I can line up perfectly with that middle seam and then I know that my design is going to be straight okay and then in terms of placement you want to place it down uh, anywhere between three and three and a half inches from the neckline so I'm going to take this shirt over to the heat press and uh, press it to get out some of these wrinkles and I'll be right back okay so I've knocked the uh, wrinkles out of this shirt where the design is going to go and then I folded the shirt in half and created a crease uh, we've already taken our design and evened it up here okay and then we're going to fold it down at the bottom okay so now we know that it's straight and we can go ahead and line up the design Okay, so if you want to be completely accurate, you can get a ruler here and measure down the three inches, and that's where your design should start, anywhere between three and three and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and put that right there. And as I mentioned earlier, with these transfer sh sheets, uh, you can use a home iron, just make sure to apply pressure. I though am going to use my heat press because I already have it heat up so I'm going to press this and I'll be right back okay guys so this is the shirt so I pressed it on the heat press for about seven seconds at 380 degrees while it was still warm I peeled the backing paper off you have to remember to peel it while it's warm if not um, when it gets cold that backing paper can uh, rip and tear like how this did and so what I did was um, I reheated it for a little bit and then just kinda using my weeding tool um, kinda did like this and picked whatever paper might have been um, left behind so if uh, if it doesn't call, come all off in one swoop, that's okay. Like I said, just heat it up again. Make sure that you don't put the iron directly on the design. You have to cover it up either with a Teflon sheet or some butcher paper or something like that. And there is a sheet that comes in, a couple of sheets that come in the uh, packet. So that's what you want to use. So that is our first shirt, white shirt using Jolie Boutique for light fabrics. I'm going to move that out the way. Now let's go ahead and get a design popping for our black shirt. And we're going to be using for this one the Nina 3G Opaque. Keeping in mind that that does have that white border that's going to be around it. Let's go ahead and go over Cricut Design Space and get our design popping. We're here at the Cricut Design Space. I went ahead and hit for a new project. I'm going to go to upload and I'm going to bring in the design I'm going to be using on my black t-shirt. And the design that we'll be using on our black shirt today is this tired. Okay, so I'm going to hit insert images. Here is my image. Now this could be made out of vinyl or it could be printed. We're going to be doing a print and cut. So what I would like to do for this design is I want to add a white background. I'm going to go to shapes, circle, 
and then try and get a circle that's about the same size. Doesn't have to be exact, but we just want to make it as close as possible, the same size. I'm going to change that to white, and I'm going to go to Arrange and move it all the way to the back. Okay. And now what I want to do is go to Align and Center. Okay, even better. And then drawing a, lot, a line, a box over everything, excuse me, and I know that I have the box over everything because they're both highlighted over here. I am going to hit flatten. So what I've done is I've created a white background to my design. Because I don't want for my letters to each individually be cut out. Okay, I just want this outer shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it because I want to check in and see how it's going to uh, cut out. So I'm going to highlighting this one or this one. I guess it really doesn't matter. I'm going to hit unflatten. Okay, draw a box over these two and I'm going to go back and do that center thing again and instead of the flatten thing I'm going to hit attach okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it from a print to no fill and okay so that's pretty good then that means that it's going to I believe cut out the way that I want for it to Let's see. Let's hit that flatten button. Yeah, that's exactly how we want it to cut out. We don't want it to cut out all that stuff in the middle. So I can X out of that. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to hit make it. Oh, cancel. Let's size it before we hit make it. Okay, so the biggest that we can have it is 9.25 by 6.75. So I guess I have to make this 6.75. That would be the biggest that it would be able to be. All right, so let's go ahead and hit make it. And we don't need to reverse this one because it's going on the opaque. So we print it right side up. I am going to remove the bleed and I'm going to hit that dialog box and okay let's hit print and then I'm going to meet you back at the mat Okay, so I have my design loaded onto my mat, and I have also gone ahead and pressed this shirt and put the line down the center. Now I am going to load this into my Cricut Maker and have it uh, go ahead and cut it out. And I'm going to cut that out on the printable vinyl setting. Okay, and then I'll be back. Okay, it's all cut out. Turn mat upside down, hold the vinyl down, pull the mat up and away. Okay, so I don't know if you can see. Now this uh, this printable heat transfer vinyl is really really thin, so be careful when you're pulling your design up and away from the backing paper not to stretch it or rip it okay and you can see that it printed out all as one piece and it's not going to cut each of those letters individually which is exactly what I wanted alright so get your ruler okay, and measure down the three to three and a half inches this one I'm just going to uh, 
to eyeball it, but I can see my center line here. So I just want to, yep, that's about right. So again, with the uh, printable heat transfer paper, I could use my home iron, but I'm going to go ahead and take this over to my heat press. Alright, so just like with the white shirt, I pressed it for about five to seven seconds. It's on there, it's not coming off. And this is the Nina 3G opaque on dark color. Okay, so now using our gray shirt, we're going to do an actual design with the heat transfer vinyl. So let's go back over to our Cricut design space so that we can design our vinyl shirt. Okay, so this is the design that we're going to create. I'm just going to show you really quickly how I created this design. Very easy. We're going to be using two different colored vinyls, black and red. First thing I did is I typed the word LOVE in all caps using the impact font. Made those words just a little bit bigger and then I went up to advance and hit ungroup letters and move the letters around. Take that E and bring that down. All right, draw a box over the V and the E. We're going to go up to a line and we're going to a line bottom because we want them even to each other. We're going to take that O and just make it disappear. Highlight the L and the V, go to a line left. Okay, now I'm going to go to images. Type for Africa, bring in the continent of Africa by highlighting and hitting insert images, and then I'm going to size it down to a size that's easier to work with and see. I'm going to change the color of the continent to red as well. And I don't want the island here on the side, I just want the main continent. So with the continent being highlighted, I'm going to hit contour. Highlight the piece I don't want to show and exit out. And then now I have just the main continent, which I can move over. And now we have our design. All right, so I'm just going to close the eye on the continent really quickly. And I'm going to draw a box over all of the letters in black and I'm going to attach them because when they cut out, I want them to cut out exactly like this. So that way I know that they're going to be aligned the way that I want them to. Now I'm going to hit the little I button, bring back over the continent, and we are good to go. Only thing left to do is to size our design to the size that we want it. Now we didn't use this before, but I am going to use it for this design. What I want you to do is go to templates and we're going to go to fashion, type in the word shirt and search. And I believe Yeah, I want to use the scoop neck. I don't want to use that wide neck. So let me go from fashion to all canvas. There we go. All right, now we're going to be using a size large shirt. This is just to help us so that we can, I'm going to group everything together so we can move it and size it accordingly. This is just to help us so that we know how big to make everything. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to be using regular heat transfer vinyl with this, the ones that come in the sheet or the roll. So we need to mirror this design. I'm going to hit make it. And I'm going to mirror the letters. 
and then scroll down and remember to mirror the continent as well and then hit continue now paying attention over here on the left is telling us exactly how many mats we're going to need to prepare and what colors we need so first mat we're going to need to have black vinyl okay and that black vinyl needs to be uh, let me see I'm gonna click on it so it opens it up so that black vinyl needs to come down at least to 11 inches and it needs to go over to at least six and a half inches okay and then with our red vinyl we know that our red vinyl needs to be at least six inches by five and a quarter inches so that we can fit that on there with no problem and then I'm going to be using this setting here vinyl Oh, actually, that's vinyl, adhesive vinyl. I need the one for iron-on. There we go. Iron-on vinyl. All right, so let's prepare our first mat. Okay, so we're preparing our first mat. I'm putting the vinyl down. Remember, shiny side goes down onto the mat. And you just need to make sure that you have it on there well either use your hands to smooth it out or you can use your scraper I'm seeing a little bit of air bubbles in there so I'm just kind of smoothing it out and then I'm gonna load this into my Cricut maker and I'll be back alright so design is all cut out and I'm gonna turn my mat over holding my vinyl down I peel my mat away from the vinyl so I don't know if you can really see too well, but I can kind of see the cut lines in the vinyl. We're going to put that to the side. Let's load up our second mat. This is going to be for the cutting of the continent. And the continent, I am going to be using a red glitter vinyl. Okay. And pay special attention and make sure that you're really tacking that glitter vinyl down because it can be very stubborn. Make sure that you change your settings to the glitter uh, vinyl before you cut it out. And you know what, before I put this on my machine, I'm going to put some reinforcements because you can see that it's really curling up there at the top. So I'm going to take some of my blue painter's tape that I always keep on hand and I'm going to add some tape to the very top and bottom just to hold the vinyl down more securely to the mat. Now I'm going to go ahead and send it over to cut. Okay, I press five seconds, okay, and then I'm going to tack down my continent design and take it back over to the heat press and press for 15 more seconds okay here we have it I pressed it for another 15 to 20 seconds and I've let the carrier sheet and vinyl cool down and now I'm going to slowly peel the carrier sheet away from the shirt Paying attention, make sure that I don't see it lifting from the shirt anywhere. Everything is on there perfect. Okay, that carrier sheet gets tossed. I'm going to do the same for the black vinyl part. Just pay attention, make sure that the vinyl isn't pulling away from any part of the shirt and it is not awesome and then again that carrier sheet gets thrown into the garbage so look at that you have that shiny shiny glitter vinyl and then the bold black imp pack font with that black vinyl I think that is a pretty cool shirt 
All right, so we've made three shirts, one using light transfer, one using dark transfer, and one using two different types of vinyl. The only other thing that I wanted to show you guys, because it kind of has something to do with what we're doing right now, is my scrap vinyl storage system. So I have two, well I have three, I'm, I'm using two and, and I'll be starting to use a third shortly. Um, 12 by 12 scrapbook albums that I got on sale from Michaels. So each 12 by 12 pocket holds a different color vinyl. Um, these are all adhesive vinyls that you would use for like tumblers, cups, journals, that type of thing that I've tried to color coordinate. But here in the back I have a couple of uh, folders that I use for leftover scraps for heat transfer vinyl. So I have a couple scraps left over of the red glitter vinyl that we used for our continent and I have a few scraps that we cut away and that are left over from our black vinyl. I don't throw anything away. It can always be used for something else. So I just take my glitter and my black vinyl and stick it into the pocket and voila I have a system that allows for me to easily locate my scrap vinyl and I found that since I did this I use my scraps a lot more than I was before okay so here once again are our shirts And then the piece de resistance. Alright, this is Genoa with the Crafty Mess signing off. I want to thank you guys for joining me. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure that you like this video. Comment, share with others if you think that they could learn something. And I want you to have a blessed and wonderful day. Thank you for joining me. Bye.